Hello and welcome to this week's issue of Beer and United. I know that you watched with horror at what has taken place in our country in just the last couple of weeks with the uh, shooting of, of uh, a young man in, in Minnesota as well as a young man in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And then the, the senseless gunning down by a sniper of five police officers in, in Dallas, Texas. And certainly we were all gripped with the question, what do we do? What do we do about that? Well, one of our pastors, uh, in fact, one, a pastor, one of our, our newest partners, the Goodwin Memorial Baptist Church with Pastor Dr. Uh, James Jackson uh, in the city of Harrisburg, did not want to see things like that come to the city of Harrisburg or the kind of protests that we've seen in response to these shootings. And so he, along with his congregation, developed a plan to try to change the tone and the tenor of relationships, particularly between the African-American community and the law enforcement community here in the Harrisburg area. And so he met uh, and gathered together with the mayor of Harrisburg, uh, with the, uh, the, the local chief of police in Harrisburg, Chief Carter, as well as the state police, as well as police officers from the surrounding jurisdictions, uh, the local state representative, and also with the, the leaders of various religious communities here in the city of Harrisburg and invited us to be a part of that as well. And they gathered on Thursday evening and this was the focus. It was an evening for prayer, an evening for discussion, and an evening for action. He asked a number of us to speak uh, to, the, to the group and share both our perspective of what has taken place in our country but also our solutions. And then following a time for about a dozen or so of us to speak, for over two hours, we invited people who, the church was packed. I mean, the church house was packed with people, all races and all contexts and all backgrounds. And for two hours, different ones got up to share their observations as well as their solutions about how to avoid this kind of a crisis in our city of Harrisburg. I'm sharing this with you uh, today because there's a couple things that I want you to take from this. One is, there are things we can do in our churches. We say the church is the place that addresses the, the human heart and the human condition. And sometimes we limit that to just what we do on Sunday morning in the pulpit. I commend the Goodman Memorial Baptist Church and, and Dr. Jackson, and not just limiting it to what they do on Sunday morning, but they invited the community into their building on Thursday evening in a very, very powerful, powerful, moving evening of prayer, discussion, and action. And notice he referenced prayer. Each one of the speakers, including the chief of police and the state representative, they concluded their comments by leading the audience in prayer. It was a powerful evening. I want to encourage you to consider what can you do in, in your context, in your community, to engage the, 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 citizens, the citizens of your neighborhood with a positive way to address the breakdown of relationships, particularly between different minority communities and our law enforcement. But it's a broader issue than just that. Now, during my time of sharing, I, I brought four things that I thought were important for them to consider. And I wanted to share these with you. First of all, I believe that one of the things that I've observed is that uh, many people have a tendency to just talk to the people with whom they already agree. And don't really have a conversation with people with whom we disagree. And I would encourage us to, and I encourage the, the people that, that night to find someone that's at a different point in the continuum of how they respond to this crisis and, and develop a conversation. Ask them why they think what they think. Don't argue, don't debate, don't disparage. Listen, everyone has a right to tell their story. And may we give them the grace of our listening. The second thing I said is that I have been concerned that in recent days we have allowed our particular uh, political convictions to sometimes become more preeminent than our spiritual values. And I reminded the people present at Goodwin of, of several spiritual values that are, that are deeply taught in the Word of God. One is, you know, Jesus said we're not supposed to murder in Matthew chapter 5. But even, even beyond that, he said that if you have hatred in your heart, it's the same thing. It's wrong. It's sin. There is no place for hatred. I reminded the group as well that in the book of Proverbs, it teaches us that justice should be impartial. 
Paul taught us that we should bear one another's burdens and that when one is burdened, we need to come alongside and help to, to lift that burden. And then Paul said in Romans that we are to respect the role and the responsibility of those that are in authority. We need to be, we need to return to our biblical values and let that be the preeminent force in making our determinations about how we deal with the things in society. A third suggestion that I brought was for the church to be the church. And what I mean by that is that it is, while certainly it is important when we gather together in the church house for worship and prayer and Bible study, that's critically important. But it is also important what happens outside the four walls of our buildings. Are our communities a better place because we're there? What are we doing to change the, 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 uh, the evil of poverty and, and of, of lack of educational opportunity and health concerns and just the well-being of the citizens in our neighborhoods. If we as the body of Christ are not making a difference in those critical needs, I've got to ask, and I asked Thursday night, why are we there? May we be the church that Jesus Christ intended us to be. One of our pastors shared with me that one of the things that he does in his community is he makes sure that the young people, the youth, the adults in his congregation know the police officers that service their neighborhood. What a, what a wonderful way to create a connection in the community and the church being the hub around which those kind of positive relationships can be formed. And then the last thing that I mentioned. Uh, last, not in terms of importance, but because I was going to then lead the group in prayer, I, I reminded us how important it is that we not just pray, but we pray intentionally. And in that, I reminded us that, that there were two parts of prayer that I believe are critically important now. One is, is lament. As, as, as the people uh, in Harrisburg or Pennsylvania or New Jersey or in the United States, uh, we need to come before God and fall on our, on our faces in a corporate lament. Oh God, what we have done with the world that you've created and given us. What we've done with the nation that uh, you allow us to, to live in and enjoy. And we need to cry out to God as Second Chronicles 7.14 tells us. That if we will you know, uh, humbly come into his presence, he will, he, will hear, he will hear our prayers. And then I also reminded the folks that this is not just about a movement or a uniform or, or someplace else. These are people that have families and, and have jobs and we're uh, the children of God. And we, as we pray, we need to pray not just in general, but pray specifically for those people that have been, that have suffered uh, uh, the loss of loved ones and their families through the, the violence that's taken place in recent days. And then I closed with a reminder that according to me as a Christ follower, I believe, as, as Paul said, that he is our peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He made both groups uh, one, and he tore down the wall of hostility. May that be true in our day. So let me encourage you to talk to your local officials and see if there are ways that you and your congregation can foster a conversation in your community that would foster peace and harmony and hope and potential for the future. Uh, we really need that and we need the presence of Christ being demonstrated by the people of Christ through the church in our communities. Thank you. God bless. Talk to you next week.